All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon to everyone. Um, check that. It's a it's a great afternoon. Uh, we're we're very excited as uh, as all 49er fans should be today. Um, what we're excited about is this group, starting with Pierre down there. Uh, let's see. We got Marquise, Robbie, Brian. He's been here. <laughs> Kyle, uh, Logan, and Malcolm. Um, we got a haul and. Uh, I, uh, I can tell you that Kyle and I and Jed and the entire York family, everybody with the 49ers organization is really proud of what we were able to accomplish um, because uh, we saw guys on film um, that we love the film, but um, there's more to it as we've discussed. Uh, we got guys of high character, high character on and off the field. And uh, Kyle does a great job, Kyle Shanahan uh, does a great job of talking about when we're watching film, you know, one phrase he uses a lot is what it takes, what it takes to win championships. And all of these guys fit in that mold. So we're thrilled to have them here. Um, I want a, a, a couple quick thank yous. Uh, Parag Marate and his group uh, did a wonderful job. Uh, we were busy and uh, did a wonderful job getting all these guys signed. And so I want to thank Parag and his group. I want to thank Adam Peters and Martin Mayhew on my staff, uh, everybody in personnel and all the coaches, uh, Kyle's group. Um, that put a lot of hard hours into this. And uh, I, most of all, I want to thank this guy right next to me because uh, we set out with the vision, and it's really cool a month later uh, to see kind of the fruits of that labor. Um, you know, what we talked about in those first conversations, I think this is a byproduct. These guys are. Uh, without further ado, I'm thrilled, and I'm going to turn it over to Kyle. Yeah, I think John about um, sums it up right there. I don't have much to say. Um, but um, we're, we're pumped to have these guys. And John said it the best that, you know, everything with us starts with, it starts with what we see on tape. And all these guys, I respect the heck out of them as football players. And it starts there, but um, the tape isn't where it ends. You know, we want to bring in here high character people um, in this building that do things the right way and our football players. And we're very confident in all these guys. Um, it's going to be part of a, the process of us winning games. We know it's going to be hard work. Um, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. And bringing these guys in are going to help us do that. So. Um, you know, this whole press conference is about the players, so I'd like to quit talking as fast as possible and <laughs> turn it over to questions for these guys. If, we could, if you guys could, when you're asking the questions, if you could give your name and outlet and uh, make sure you give the name of who you're asking the questions, please. <clears throat> uh, Matt Mayoka from CSN Bay Area. Uh, my question is to the two wide receivers, Pierre and Marquise. Uh, what was the process like for you guys to want to sign here without there being a quarterback? on the roster and what questions did you guys have to have answered uh and then when you find out of course that, that brian's coming you want me to take it? <laughs> um you know as receivers you know making plays in this league you know it, it doesn't really matter who's throwing you the ball you know you have to catch it as soon as the ball leaves the quarterback hand it's all up to you and we know we both know we can make plays regardless who's throwing us the ball and that's what we're going to do you know on every sunday that we're out here even on the practice field as well but we're just happy to have a team that wants us, that want us to be a part of the, the, the winning and, you know, keep it moving forward. Marcus, did you have any questions about the quarterback situation? Uh, not really. Um, piggybacking off of what Pierre said, um, it's important that, you know, we focus on the things that we can bring to the table, you know, catching the ball, getting open. And I think that's what's most important, you know. Our job is to make the quarterback look good, and I'm glad we have Brian here um, throwing us the ball. Matt Barrows, uh, Sacramento Pete. To, to Kyle, uh, are you able to confirm um, uh, Matt Barkley being added as well at this point? And if so, what about him and, and Brian, you know, uh, you know, drew you to them? What, what are the characteristics that you like in, in both of those guys? Well, I, I can't confirm Matt yet. You know, I think he's going through a physical and they still have to sign on paper. So I can't confirm any of those guys that have been reported close, but nothing's set in stone until we get that done. But I'm um, just bringing Brian in. Um, you know, you look, uh, we told you guys we're going to try to prove our team everywhere everywhere possible. And it starts with free agents, and it goes into the draft, and then it goes to working with the guys we have here. And just looking at the whole market and, and there, knowing Brian and what he's done over his career, it always starts with the tape as usual. And anybody who studies tape on Brian, wherever he's been, he's done a great job. And obviously getting being able to work with him for a year that I did, that means I knew him. And uh, that's a part of the great character that I talk about. Uh, the advantage to having been with someone is you know what type of guy they are. There's always a risk. When you see the tape and you bring someone in that you don't know, you don't know exactly what you're getting that you can't see on tape. Um, to know the tape, to know the person, um, was why we really wanted to get them. Uh, second row middle. Kevin Jones, KMBR. 
Brian, welcome to the Bay Area. Thanks. Do you guys think you can recreate what you did in Cleveland, that 7-4 and four start? Um, is, is that what kind of drew you here? Well, I think, you know, when you go through this process and, and you find out what the options are and then, you know, my agent tells me that, you know, San Francisco, you know, wants me and, and obviously, you know, right then and there, you're flattered because, you know, Kyle's is his first year as a head coach and John is as a GM and to know that they want you to help start their, their era um, was very flattering and, and, you know, you talk about a gut feeling when I knew that I had a chance to work with this guy again, especially, you know, he, like he mentioned that one year working together, but then you watch him go on to Atlanta and see the things that they do and the year that they had this year offensively. I mean, um, you know, it's just that gut feeling that I knew that this was the best place for me. And, um, you know, I was really excited about the opportunity because I feel like, you know, we kind of had some unfinished business from Cleveland. We didn't get a full, you know, even a full year. Um, and, you know, so get another chance to, to be in the system, to be around him. You know, he talked about knowing the type of guy I am. I know the type of guy that he is, too. And I know, you know, that this is, this is his life. And, and, you know, you want to be around a coach like that. We've got uh, front row left. Uh, Josh Dubai with Associated Press. Brian, can you just elaborate a little more on what it is about Kyle that made this so attractive? And for Pierre and Logan, can you also talk about how your familiarity with Kyle attracted you to come here? Well, I think I, I kind of touched on it. You, uh, when you get to spend as much time with someone as you, as he and I did that one year. I mean, it's you know several hours a day for for months on end. Um, you get to know him as a person. You get to know him as a coach. And then you know, for me to see him go on and, and flourish in, in Atlanta, um, you know, just confirmed everything I knew about him. And then, like I said, when when you get the opportunity to come back and play for the guy and and um, you know really start that era like that and and. Um, it was, it was just, to me, I knew in my, in my gut that this was the place that was for me. And really, I just had to get my wife on board and moving out to California. So she said, you know, who wouldn't want to live in California? So when, when I got that answer, I, I knew, you know, this was going to be the place for us. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't honestly say enough positive things about Kyle Shanahan. I think is the way he approaches the game, the way he approaches his preparation. I mean, obviously, he's in this position because he's a special player, a special coach, and he's a special person. And I, I count myself very privileged to to play for him again. I have had that opportunity in the past. And um, anybody who's played for him knows what kind of football mind he is. And when you have the opportunity to play with a coach of that caliber, uh, you take that. You jump on that as quick as you can. Uh, Kevin Lynch with uh, SF Gate, no relation, as I, I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and with all due respect to, to Brian and, and Matt, if he passes his physical, but are you guys done in terms of free agency with quarterbacks, or are you still going to look? Well, you know, we're never done trying to improve our team. We're, we're going to try to improve our team every single day. You know, and the biggest step was the first day of free agency. Uh, we'll continue to look. You, know, you rarely take just two guys into a camp, so I have a pretty good feeling we will add more. I don't know whether that be through free agency or the draft, but there's every avenue possible, and we don't limit ourselves to anything. There, there's lots of ways to win in this league. Um, usually the best way changes every year because there's zero absolutes, and that's something John, staff upstairs and us downstairs, we will never stop working to do. Even if we have six of them, we're still looking for more, so that's a never-ending process. Front row right. Uh, CJ Peterson, SF Bay. Um, in addition to the seven guys that are sitting up with you guys here, this is, by the way, this is for uh, Kyle and uh, John. Um, you guys are expected to sign two more free agents, you know, in the next coming days. That's a total of nine signings, uh, you know, for the first couple of days of free agency compared to 2016 when you guys only, or the team only signed two free agents. Um, how have you guys approached in changing not only the culture um, of the 49 organization, but also making San Francisco a destination for free agents? Yeah, you know, I think we were. Um, we were very strategic setting out with where, um, where we felt we needed to improve our team. <clears throat> but then let's not do it um, you know, just with any player. Let's, let's find if, if there's people out there that fit what we're looking for. And I, I've described, I think that's one thing we've done extremely well, is get a great definition, have it clearly defined what we're looking for at each position. And the type of person, that's what we did from the outset. And so, um, I think while there's uh, a lot of numbers, uh, we didn't reach for anything. We, we, we found guys that fit it. If not, we will wait. And uh, so I think um, while the numbers are big and we're, we're really happy about that, um, we, uh, we felt like we found guys that uh, we were excited about being here, not just getting guys because we needed guys. Right. Uh, Nick here on the right. Yeah. 
Nick Wagner, ESPN. My question is for the other Kyle, and I'm not going to be the first one to try to pronounce your last name. But uh, <laughs> you, you're one of the guys who hasn't played for Kyle in, in the past. But I, I'm assuming you've studied a lot of of his offense and the way he uses fullbacks. What about that was appealing to you? And do you see this as an opportunity to really expand on what you've done in this league already? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I had watched tape on the Falcons' offense last off season just because you know they were one of the best off. Well probably the best offense in the NFL last season. And I like to watch uh, Patrick DeMarco and kind of see how he was being used and, uh, you know, what he was good at. And I, you know, use that to kind of compare with myself. But when I was going through this process and trying to figure out where I wanted to play and San Francisco was on the table, reached out to a couple of players who, uh, that I had played with and knew my style and had played with uh, Coach Shanahan here and they all just had outstanding reviews about his offense and told me how well I would fit in to what we're trying to do here. So, uh, you know, when I got some seal of approvals from guys like Owen Daniels, Justin Forsett, Matt Schaub, uh, you know, that, that kind of sealed the deal for me and I, I knew this could be a good place for me. It's a it's use check, right? Use check. Use check. <laughs> use check. So we're all getting used to it. But I'll tell you with Kyle, um, you know, there were a couple points, just being completely honest, where you know, we, we set out uh, early on and we said, this guy, um, he, he's worth it to us. We're going to make him the highest paid fullback in football. And, and, you know, what I've learned very quickly, the price goes up in free agency when there's numerous suitors. There were numerous suitors for him. And at some point, Kyle and I said, wow, this is getting, this is getting, this is getting real. And, uh, but we both gravitated. I forget who coined it, but we said, you know, let's not think of him as a fullback. He's an OW. So if you see OW, that stands for offensive weapon. And uh, we saw an offensive weapon that this guy uh, is, is thrilled to be able to use in a number of different capacities. And, um, you know, I think that that kind of is symbolic of our approach. Um, there's, there's a reason behind each one of these guys and, and why we felt compelled um, to go get them and be aggressive in doing so. And it, you know, I guess we were fortunate that uh, there were, we had a lot of room to do so, and uh, we still have a lot more room. So we're in great position. We have an owner that if we don't use the room this year, we carry it over till next year. So um, we're, we're really excited about where we're at. Uh, John, John Dickinson, 95-7 the game. My question is for Malcolm Smith. Uh, what was appealing? Clearly there's a, on the offensive focus among the, the group that's here today, but. What was appealing about the 49ers uh, to you as far as a team that you know, had struggled defensively the last couple of years, but some of the young players that you see, what made that end of the ball appealing and, and this to be a new home for you? Yeah, I mean, I had seen some of the players, and I know there was talent there. And um, my familiarity with Coach Sala uh, played a big factor in that as well. So uh, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm kind of trusting that you know, the right people are in place. And, and from what I've seen, you know, I think that's the case. Front row left. Yeah, I'm Malcolm, uh, Jerry McDonald, Bay Area News Group. To follow up on that. Do you see any parallels? And in, in when you went to Oakland, when you, you, you go to Oakland with a defensive coordinator that you knew on a team that was looking to turn things around and did turn things around, do you see some, some parallels there? Definitely. And it's all about the people. So I, I think it's important that, you know, um, one of the most important things to, to the management here is the character. Um, that plays a big factor in whether you can turn things around or not. So. I'm glad to be in a good place where that's important. All right, front row right. Hi, Jennifer Chan, Niners Nation for Pierre. Um, can you talk a little bit about Clyde Christensen and how important a coach is for your role? Oh, Clyde is, uh, Clyde is the reason why I'm here. Clyde, uh, you know, got me my first year in Indy, and uh, he was hard on me. But uh, he was a great guy. He's like a father figure to him. I still talk to him almost every, every time I get a chance. I talked to him early in the year, last year. He texted me a couple days ago saying, congratulations, don't change. Um, but um, he put everything in front of me to, to be where I'm at. He told me to watch Reggie, Marvin, Gonzo, Dallas, Peyton. And he just, you know, hey, this is what you do. And he was hard on me every day. Even when I was doing something good, he was still hard on me, not letting me know that I was doing it good. But um, he's the reason why, I, why I'm here. And um, he's the reason why I'm 10 years into the NFL. But um, Clyde is a very good guy. And, uh, he, He's, you know, he's he helped my football career and my personal life, too, as well. Front row left. <clears throat> Grant Cohn, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Pierre, at this stage in your career, why were you interested in joining a team that's coming off a two-win season and maybe a couple of years away from playoff contention? 
Uh, you know, at football, you know, one year can turn everything around. You know, we've done that in um, D.C. when we got when I went to D.C. when Kyle brought me in. You know, if we um, put our nose to the ground and just grind and play every day, I know things could change around. Um, looking forward to you know help build something instead of you know part of something that's already winning. So you know, I enjoy working hard, working for every victory and working for every play and gaining every yard I can after every catch. So that's what I enjoy doing. And you know. Nothing nowhere better to be than with a coach that wants you and a team that wants to win and a city that wants to win, especially with the fans too. All right, front row center, Eric. Hey, uh, Brian, this is Eric Branch with the San Francisco Chronicle. You have, were unrecruited throughout your career. It's been like, oh, he's a nice quarterback. <laughs> but, you know, what, can we do better? I mean, you're being viewed as, you know, maybe a one-year placeholder. Um, I assume everyone talks about a chip on their shoulder. Do you, do you have that? Uh, just because of maybe the reputation you have as a good quarterback but not considered among the elite. Yeah, I think, um, you know, especially when you enter the league as an undrafted free agent, you always feel like there's a lot to prove. So, um, you know, I'm worried about this year, and that's all I can control. And, and that's coming in here and being the best quarterback I can for this organization. Um, it's a real exciting time. You know, you see the guys that, you know, they've put in place. I, like I said, I've worked with Kyle. You know, you get to meet John Lynch, a guy who knows a lot about football, who's been in our shoes. Um, you know, there's a lot of respect there. And, and um, you know, so for me, I have a lot of confidence in myself. You know, unfortunately, every time something's kind of gone well, you know, there's been an injury or, or, or a bad game here or there. And, and you just put it behind you and you keep fighting. And that's why, like I said, as an undrafted player, I'm sitting here going into my ninth year with the, the great chance, you know, to be the quarterback for this team. And that's all I'm looking for. And, and I, I think, um, you know, you go out and just prove it every day. And it's not just on Sundays, it's coming in here and, you know, being a leader in, in the, the locker room. It's um, getting together with these new guys. And, you know, I have familiar um, familiarity with this system and, and try to help them in. You know, obviously Pierre's played in it before, Logan. You know, we bring Marquise in here and, and get him going and, and Kyle. And, um, you know, so there's a lot that goes into it. And, you know, I'm thankful that I have this opportunity because, um, you know, sitting back these last few days, I had, I had options. And, and like I said before, when I had this, gut feeling when you know I had a chance to play for Kyle again I knew it was the right fit for me at, at this point in my career uh, Matt Mayoko uh, again Robbie uh, you've kicked in some difficult places uh, I'm sure you, you've kicked a candlestick as well and I think you were here probably for the first game your thoughts on, on coming here kicking in Levi Stadium and replacing Phil Dawson well, I mean, first, I have the most respect for Phil Dawson. He's probably been the guy that I've looked up to since the beginning of my career because of how well not only did he kick here, but also in Cleveland. Uh, the type of person that he is um, and the respect that I have for him trying to watch film and you talk about getting better and the things that you do and the people you want to model yourself after. That's a guy that, you know, I hope that I can come in and, and do my job to help these guys uh, around me. Um, whether it's finish a drive or start the defense off uh, backed up uh, with the kickoff or let the guys go hunt and eat on, on kickoff as well. Um, but I think the big part for me is I'm excited about the warm weather. I'm going to be completely honest. You know, taking it in Chicago and New York, and get in December and it's 70 degrees, it's going to be a little bit different for me. But um, at the end of the day, you know, I think a lot of these guys can tell you it's about relationships. It's about uh, doing your job. It's about fighting for one another. It's about the culture in the locker room. And I think if you talk to any single one of these guys, which we've probably passed each other 10 times, whether it's by physical, by going to HR or whatever, I think there's a common goal that each guy here has, and it's winning. And that's all we talk about. And we've talked about, hey, we're going to do it for one another. It's not about stats. It's not about I'm going to catch this amount of balls. I don't think any guy sitting here talking at all today talked about I'm going to do this and I'm going to have this and I'm going to do that. And it was all about really winning and how we're going to go about winning. So um, I'm excited to be kicking in warm weather, but shoot, I'm excited about this group. I mean, you talk about a kicker. A kicker gets a lot of time on his hands to talk to everybody <laughs> realistically, you know, and uh, we get to observe a lot and you talk about the two guys that are um, really forming what the, the building blocks and the foundation for uh, what's going to be, I think, something really special, and that's what gets me excited about being on the stage today.
Right. Nick Wagner, ESPN. Marquise, uh, as, as a guy who some of the things obviously out of your control with injuries and things maybe haven't produced as much as you would have liked in the past, when you were making your decision, did you look at a guy like, say, a Taylor Gabriel who Kyle had success with and kind of pulled that out of him? Was that a factor in your decision, and, and did you do that? I just looked at the opportunity that I had um, uh, ahead of me, um, you know, being able to have the opportunity to come to an organization like this is, you know, a blessing. Blessing in disguise, coming from Buffalo, totally different. Uh, the culture, the winning tradition here, the people here, um, the sun, the warm weather. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything about it is just different. So I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Uh, Joe here in the second row, right? Uh, Joe Fan, 49ers.com. Pierre, uh, specifically reuniting with Kyle. How appealing was that? You had some great years with him in Washington. Um, it was very appealing. Um, you know, me and Kyle go way back. Um, I enjoy working with Kyle. He definitely is an offensive guru, and uh, you know, he will definitely show us how it's done with his own personal tapes. You know, in, the, in our field. <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, it's one of those things that you know he loves what he does. He loves you know players that play hard for him, and I enjoy playing for somebody that wants me. So you know, it's uh, happy to be reunited. Happy uh, to see him doing well. Happy to see the head coach, and I'm happy to you know get this thing started.